Hi everyone, welcome to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Mohammed Hassan. Hope you people are giving your best as the NEET exam is around the corner as the world is pretty disturbed by the fast spreading of coronavirus. You as a student are requested to take all the preventive measures that are put forward by experts. Please quarantine yourself. Not because of coronavirus, but because you have an important exam right in front of you. A little bit of joke. Since cities are locked down and I have some spare time, so I thought why not create a video for my students to make one concept that is feared by most students to make it as simple as possible. The concept that I will talk about is sliding of two blocks one above the other when there is presence of friction. So let's dive into that concept. Before that, please keep a notebook in front of you and take whatever note I am uh, giving you or whatever I am writing in the screen just take a note of that and focus so that I could make this concept as simple as possible so let's get started so as you can see that there are two cases the first and the second in the first case we can see that there are two blocks one is heavier mass capital M and above it is a smaller mass of smaller M and the coefficient of friction between uh, smaller mass and the capital mass is mu2 and the coefficient of friction between the capital mass this one and the ground is mu1 the force applied is on the heavier mass and it is in the direction of right side so this is the first case and the second case says that uh, it's the same thing only difference is that the force is applied on the lighter mass and it is in the right hand direction okay so these are the two cases that we mostly see most of the time in exam case one is asked okay so let's understand the concept in order to solve this kind of question the first thing that you need to understand is free body diagram so we'll discuss first the free body diagram of both the cases and if you can understand the free body diagram the next part will be simple okay so let's understand that in order to understand the free body diagram the first analysis that you need to do is the block in which external force is directly applied okay here in the first case we can see the external force is directly applied to the lower block that is having mass capital m and in case two we can see that the uh, external force is applied to the uh, smaller block which is kept above having mass small m okay so let's analyze the first case since we have applied force in the right hand direction and there is a friction between this block and the ground so there will be a frictional force acting in the opposite direction F1 as we have already drawn. As we know that friction always tries to oppose the relative motion between uh, bodies. I hope this much is clear. Okay, now let's move on to this mass. Smaller mass. Now there is no direct force applied on it. But just imagine this thing. If you can imagine thing, things becomes much more easier. Okay. Now imagine that you have applied a very high force in this direction. What will happen to this block? We know that this block will obviously slide in this direction if we give a very high force. So as a result, what will happen when we apply force and this mass has a tendency to move this side or slide this side, a friction force will oppose it in the opposite direction. Okay, so that the body does not move. I hope this much is clear. So a force of friction comes up F2. Okay. Now this is 80% of the free body diagram. The only thing missing is that you need to build up a concept here. The concept here is that when F2 comes up here, then it will have a reaction on the lower mass in the opposite direction. So if F2 is in this direction, its reaction on capital M will be in the opposite direction F2 okay I hope this much is clear this is simple as that this is how you need to draw the free body diagram for case 1 once you understand this just analyze case 2 it's easy so if we do the analysis then we can see that we have applied force on this mass okay so we will analyze it first since the external force is applied on this so we applied this force capital F very good then a frictional force will come up in the opposite direction 
because there is a coefficient of friction mu2 as you can see in the figure so f2 comes up in the opposite direction so we have solved this part and i've told you earlier that when we apply force in this direction to this body then what will happen to this body this body will try to slide this side just imagine if you imagine you can if close your eyes and imagine see if you slide this then it will feel like this body is moving in this direction isn't it obviously if this body tries to move in this direction then there will be a frictional force f1 in the opposite direction trying to oppose it i hope this part is clear so we have solved the mystery of f1 we have solved the free body diagram of this body so the only thing left is since f2 is the frictional force uh, in the left hand side its reaction on capital m will be in the opposite direction f2 okay so this is the reaction of this f2 i hope this much is clear very easy just understand the free body diagram how it's working if you can just understand how this thing is actually working then uh, you can solve most of the questions that are asked okay so i hope this much is clear free body diagram so i'll repeat again the most important thing is first you need to analyze the body in which direct force is applied just draw like here you can see that capital f is applied here so there will be obvious friction force in the opposite direction then jump on to the next mass and we know that f2 will be in this direction as a result of which there will be reaction in the opposite direction on capital m because uh, both of the mass like cap small m and capital m is sharing the same surface so both will have friction isn't it so if f2 is the friction in this direction if the reaction will be in the opposite direction okay so i hope this much is clear if it is not clear then please uh, pause the video go back and listen to the lecture again okay so let's move on now let's see uh, what are the kind of question that are asked in exam uh, for sliding blocks the most common question that they will ask is find the frictional force that is uh, this f1 between uh, the this block and the ground okay this is one question that is find the frictional force between the block and the ground another question is what is the frictional force suppose f2 between both the bodies so this is one of the question so how to solve this kind of question let's analyze and build the concept for that the first thing that you need to check is whether this whole system this is a system okay whether the whole system is actually moving or not i'll explain again suppose you have applied force here okay your job is to find out whether this force is capable of moving the system in this direction this is the first thing that you need to do so if there are two cases if it is able to move then this is the case if it is unable to move then this is the case okay i have broken down into two parts so let's first see that we have applied f and it is unable to move this body this whole system like this whole system it is unable to move then what will be the frictional force f1 between the body and the ground and f2 between both the masses okay let's analyze that now we all know if the system doesn't move that means this applied f is unable to uh, overcome the frictional force f1 isn't it so from there we can say when a system doesn't move the condition is f1 the frictional force is greater than or equal to f okay so this is the first thing so how to find f1 f1 can be easily found out by we know that f1 is nothing but mu n isn't it now mu n mu is already given as mu1 n is small m plus capital m see this is the normal reaction so normal reaction will be the total mass into g so this is the normal force isn't it so this is the value of f1 i hope this is clear now if f1 is greater than or equal to the force applied externally then obviously the system will not move and if the system doesn't move what will be the frictional force your frictional force won't be f1 like mu1 m plus capital m into g your frictional force will be 
the applied force because remember one thing when a body doesn't move that means the external force is lower than the limiting friction and when anything is lower than the limiting friction then the frictional force is a self adjusting force so for example uh, let's understand this we have applied the force here suppose 80 newton and it is not moving that means the frictional force is 80 newton if we apply 60 newton and is not moving that means the frictional force is 60 newton here it is 80 newton isn't it then what is this f1 mu n this f1 is equal to mu n is the limiting value of the friction that if we apply a, a force greater than this force then the system will start to move i hope this much is clear okay so the frictional force will be equal to the applied force don't hurry and write down the value of this as the frictional force f1 okay it will not be this value rather the value will be equal to f1 will be equal to the applied force now what will be the frictional force f2 that is this value uh, between this and this the friction between uh, the blocks what will the value of f2 the value of f2 will be zero now look at this how it will be zero it will be zero because if this system is not moving then there will be no resultant force on this isn't it if it is not moving there will be no resultant force on this and if there is no resultant force on this then there will be no uh, adjusting friction there will be no self adjusting friction as a result of which friction will be zero since applied force is zero i hope this is clear so f1 is capital f and f2 will be zero when the system is not moving so this is the first part of finding the frictional force between surfaces when the system is not moving now let's understand if the system is moving then what will happen things will become a little bit more complicated so let's see if uh, we apply the force suppose capital f in the in this direction okay in the right hand side direction and f is uh, greater than f1 that is uh, the applied force is greater than the frictional force between the uh, bigger mass and the ground then obviously the there will be a net force in the right hand side and the body will move in this direction this is clear as that so the condition is if f is greater than mu1 capital m plus small m into g then the system will start to move once the system starts to move again there is two condition if the system is moving the system will move together like m and m will move together that is they are sticking with each other or or there is a sliding motion between this capital m and small m there are two cases so we will jump into that don't worry uh, let's first uh, solve the frictional force f1 then we will look into f2 so what will be the value of f1 f1 will be the maximum or the limiting frictional force value it will not be equal to the force applied here we see in the first case it is equal to the force applied but since f is greater than the frictional force here so we cannot say that uh, f1 will be equal to uh, the applied force rather f1 will be equal to the limiting value that is the maximum value of friction okay so f1 is done this is simple the second thing is what is the frictional force f2 between capital m and small m this is bit tricky this is bit tricky because there are two condition whether the upper block the small m is actually sliding or not if it is sliding it will have a different f2 value if it is not sliding then it will have a different f2 value so let's see as i have told that if it is sliding then it will have a f2 value when it is not sliding it will have a different f2 value in order to understand this you need to understand the concept of acceleration okay we will jump into this concept of acceleration but before that let's uh, solve a problem okay let's understand the concept that we talked about using a numerical problem the question says find the frictional force between blocks that is between 5 kg and 15 kg and the frictional force between 15 kg and the ground this is the question simple as that now they have given you four options 
So don't just look into this question and jump directly with the formula that F1 will be mu into M plus capital M into G. Because we know that if the system is not moving, then F1's value will not be equal to this because this is the limiting value as we have already discussed. So the first thing that we need to see is whether the system is moving or not. So let's see that. So this is our first requirement. Uh, we need to check whether the system is moving or not. In order to find F1, we need to check that first. This is the limiting value F1 is equal to mu1 capital M into small m into g and it comes out to be 120 Newton. Okay. And we have applied 80 Newton. So obviously, we can see that F1 is greater than F. So the system is not moving. If the system is not moving, then we can directly say that F1 is equal to capital F. That is, it is friction is self adjusting here. So we can say until F is greater than F1, F1 will be self adjusting to F as it's written here. Just write it down, all these things. So these are the conditions. So we have found out F1. Now, so F1 is done. Now, since this is the condition, if F1 is greater than or equal to capital F, and we can write it in formula form, the system will not move as we have seen. And we have seen this, that frictional force F1 will be capital F, and the frictional force F2 will be zero as stated earlier. So we can uh, directly say that from the option that your answer will be uh, this one, 80 Newton, this is the applied force and F2 will be zero because since the system is not moving, there will be no force on the upper body. Okay. So this is the concept. This is how you need to solve this kind of question. But this is simple. Things become complicated when the system is moving then because there's another case of sliding and non-sliding. So let's see that. Now let's see how to find F2 when the system is in motion. So let's see how to find F2 when the system is in motion. Okay. So there are two cases when the system is motion and there is no sliding between blocks and when the system is moving and there is sliding between blocks. Okay. In order to understand this, you need the concept of common acceleration. Now what is common acceleration? How to find common acceleration? First of all, understand this. In order to find co common acceleration, see from the word you can say that common acceleration means both the body will be moving with same acceleration. That is, they are moving together. Okay. Since both the bodies are moving together, what we can do is we can change this diagram into a single diagram. Okay. So we can say that we can convert this diagram as this because both are moving at the same uh, acceleration. We can say that M plus capital M is the total mass and we have applied F and this is the friction mu1. Okay. Now, once you can draw this, now common acceleration is easy. We know that acceleration is given by the net force divided by the total mass and net force is F minus F1. This is the frictional force between the mass and the ground divided by the total mass capital M plus small m. So you need to calculate this whenever the system is moving. The first thing whenever you found out that the system is moving, immediately you need to find out common acceleration. So this is the formula for common acceleration. Once you find out common acceleration, you need to check whether the bodies are sliding or not. Okay. Now, in order to solve that problem, you need to take the help of free body diagram. Now, this free body diagram has already been explained earlier. Okay. That is, we have applied force here to the bigger mass. So a frictional force will come up in the opposite direction F1. Now, let's look at this then. We know that when something is moving in this direction, it has the tendency to slide in the opposite direction. So a frictional force in this direction will come up. And due to this F2, a reaction of F2 will come up on the bigger mass. So this is the free body diagram, total free body diagram. I hope this much is clear because once you understand this, things will become easy and easy. Now the acceleration, this F2, the force that is applied on M, is responsible for acceleration because acceleration is only possible when there is force acting on a body. So the acceleration due to F2 will be net force. Now we know that this is the net force F2 and the total mass is m small m. So mu mg F2 is mu mg 
this is the formula for friction divided by small m so af becomes mu mg this is very important af is equal to mu g you have all the ingredients that are required to understand whether the body is sliding or not when the system is moving okay if you haven't understand the concept so far please pause the video go back and listen to the lecture again because this part is very important once you understood the concept of common acceleration and acceleration due to frictional force and that is indirect force that is applied on a smaller mass once you understand both the acceleration if you understand this the next part is simple as that okay so let's see the concept here is if ac is less than or equal to af there will be no sliding so you got the value of af you got the value of ac ac we have already found out that is f minus f1 divided by capital m plus small m this thing we have found out this thing we have found out then what we need to do is compare the value if ac is less than af then there will be no sliding obviously that means the frictional force uh, is bigger than common acceleration that is this force is bigger if this force is bigger there is no question of sliding isn't it because fric what does friction do friction stops a uh, motion or opposes motion so there will be no sliding if af is greater than or equal to ac if ac is greater than af then there will be sliding these are the two conditions or the concepts that you need to remember okay so whenever the system is moving just find out common acceleration and find out af and just compare the value and find out whether the bodies are sliding or not okay so this is all about the concept of uh, body sliding over one another now let's analyze one of the question in order to make this concept as clear as possible okay so let's see let's jump into one of the question the question says that find acceleration of the block and the frictional force so we need to find out acceleration and the frictional force between blocks and the frictional force between the lower block and the ground see we have all the concepts so we'll just apply here the question is whenever the applied force this force is 100 newton second when the force is 300 newton and third when the force is 500 newton now let's see the solution it's easy as that so what is the first thing that we need to do when we when we see this kind of question the first thing is whether the system is moving or not so in order to understand that we need to find out f1 and we need to see f and we can easily do that f1 is equal to mu that is 0.4 into total mass that is 40 kg plus 10 kg is 50 kg and g10 so we got 200 newton and we have applied 100 newton so we can see that the applied force is less than the frictional force limiting frictional force between the body and the ground so the system will not move and we directly know that if the system doesn't move then acceleration for each body will be zero so we found out the acceleration and the frictional force that is f1 will be equal to the applied force so it will be 100 newton and since the system is not moving f2 will be zero since there is no indirect force that is being applied on the upper mass so this is the first part of the problem now let's see when we apply 300 newton what will happen then let's see so again f1 will be same 200 newton we have already found out in our, in the earlier case and we know that f1 will not change f1 will be 0.4 into 50 kg into 10 and if you do this it will be 200 newton okay done and we have applied capital f is equal to 300 newton simple as that now we can check the condition the applied force is greater than the limiting friction force so the system will move uh, so we have found out one thing like f1 is already done the frictional force f1 this is one of the question that is being asked now since the system is moving we need to check whether the bodies are sliding or not in order to understand whether the bodies are sliding or not what i have said is you need to check ac and af so ac is the net force common acceleration convert this body into a single body and find out the value like the force applied is f and the opposite force of friction is f1 divided by total mass and we got 2 meter per second square af as you can see from the free body diagram above f2 divided by m or we have directly found out that mu g is the value of af so af is equal to 5 meter per second square and the condition here we can see that af is greater than ac and we know that the frictional acceleration 
if it is greater than common acceleration there will be no sliding okay now let's see what happens if there is no sliding we have already found out f1 is equal to 200 so what will be the value of f2 okay but before that the question is also asked about acceleration and we know that since there is no sliding that means both the bodies are moving with the same acceleration there is common acceleration so acceleration of both the body will be a common acceleration 2 meter per second square but we haven't solved the value of f2 still we need to find out that how to find out that now you need to understand what is the limiting value of f2 the limiting value of f2 will be mu we can see from the figure it is 0 0.5 into m into g so mu mg and the value will turn out to be 50 newton okay so this is the maximum value of f2 the limiting value okay since the bodies are moving together that means there is no sliding no sliding means actually when the body is not moving or sliding that means the friction is still in the self adjusting phase okay self adjusting phase you can see from here since the upper body is moving with common acceleration that is no sliding in that case always remember when there is no sliding then f2 will always be m into ac because the mass is moving with acceleration ac and it is in the self adjusting mode that means value of this friction will be less than 50 newton until and unless it reaches 50 newton it will be always in the self adjusting part or the self adjusting phase so you can see that it is in the self adjusting phase and the value of f2 will be 20 newton that is mac it is only possible because both the bodies are moving with the common acceleration okay i hope this is clear a bit tricky just pause and go through it again if you haven't understood and it will be clear it will be more clear when i discuss the last part of the question let's see if we have applied 500 newton then what will happen again things are quite similar we have already found out f1 and we have applied 500 newton and we can see that the system will move because f is greater than f1 okay so when the system is moving the second thing we need to do is find out ac and af isn't it so ac we found out to be 6 meter per second square and af that is mu g i'm doing it directly because i'm assuming that you have understood the concept of af okay so mu g is 5 meter per second square and we can see that af is less than ac so it is defeating the frictional force okay ac is defeating the frictional force so there will be sliding i hope this is clear now things become tricky i have told you that if there is no sliding both are moving at the same acceleration then the value of f2 will be mac but since there is sliding the value of f2 will be mu mg that is 50 newton that is this is the maximum it can have okay that is the limiting case so this is the difference when there is no sliding f2 will be mac if there is sliding then f2 will be the limiting case okay so the acceleration of 10 kg that is the smaller mass will be af is equal to 5 meter per second square and acceleration of 40 kg will be how to solve this this is very easy just draw the free body diagram we have already seen the free body diagram how to draw we have applied 500 newtons so obviously f1 will be acting in this direction because of the coefficient of friction between the ground and the bigger mass and we have and we have found it to be 200 newton now since the system is moving there will be f2 in the above block and this f2 will have its reaction in the lower block in this direction so the net force or acceleration of 40 kg will be net force divided by total mass so net force is 500 in this direction and 50 plus 200 in the opposite direction divided by the total mass we got 6.25 as the acceleration of 40 kg this is how you need to solve questions of sliding blocks okay so i will sum up the whole thing uh, into a nutshell the first thing that we need to check is that whether the system is moving or not if the system is moving then you need to check whether the bodies are sliding or not if the applied force is less than f1 then the system will not move if the applied force is greater than f1 the system will move if the system moves you need to find out ac 
and AF. Okay. And then we can find out whether the bodies are sliding or not. As you can see that if AC is less than equal to AF, that is this is greater, friction is greater, then it will not slide. And if AC is greater than AF, then it will slide. Very simple as that. This is how you need to solve questions based on block sliding over each other in the presence of friction. Yeah, this is all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, then please consider doing so. Till next time, enjoy your studies and build your concept. And I will catch you all in my next video. Bye-bye.